I really looked at myself because I, I was dealing with childhood traumas that I hadn't addressed. And so for me, it was uh, more of a, hey, this is probably your last chance. I was facing a life sentence. There's people who commit criminal acts and there are people who are kind of career criminals. And so I was just one of those that was unfortunately committing criminal acts out of my own frustrations in life. And so for me to get back on track, it was going to work every day. It was disciplining myself to do those things and getting to participate in a, you know, a positive program. I am a machine operator, but I am a machinist in training, if that makes sense. What I'm doing is uh, I run parts, I do my own setups at this point. Uh, I've learned how to uh, look at a job book and go and, and get the manufacturer uh, uh, specifications that are off of the, uh, the drawing for that part, as well as get all the tooling that is necessary, uh, build the tools that go into the machine to actually run to create the part. So it's, it's a lot of detail. And um, I've always been a kind of a attention to detail kind of person. So uh, the process is, is, is beautiful to me because a lot of times you're working by yourself. And so you have to be your own, um, I guess, supervisor, if you could, if you could call it that, because you're making sure that all these I's are dotted and all these T's are crossed before you can actually, you know, get this machine started to put out the finished product that you're desiring. I love working with my hands. Uh, one of the things that I do is uh, I think a lot. And so when I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm laying out what, what, what job I'm getting ready to participate in, I'm taking notes, I'm getting all my tools ready. Uh, I've got a toolbox with all these different tools that I've already purchased. Uh, I've been given a little bit of advice from some of my coworkers on what tools I need to have and these are crucial or you, know, you can't live without these and so uh, I like to work with my hands. I like, I like the fact of even deburring as sometimes that's the most, the most painstaking part of the job, but it's kind of therapeutic. So like I say, it's that creativity mix again. Machining is a wonderful tool for people who are coming out of incarceration or any of these adverse backgrounds. One, we're not dealing with cash money and a lot of times getting into retail as a profession is going to be a lot harder of a pathway. Uh, here we're dealing with numbers. Things are about precision. Things are about attention to details. So anyone that's got any kind of aptitude to do those things would greatly excel in a, in a position such as this. And that's why I really put in a lot of time into making sure that I was disciplined in my mind as well as in my habits so that when I got an opportunity like this that I could excel in it. A lot of the things that I've learned so far um, doing uh, on the job training and then uh, how it translates in our classroom has been uh, little processes, the little things like how to do proper measurements and reading some of the uh, equipment that we use. So when you're doing uh, verifications of measurements and finding out uh, distances, uh, there's little tricks of the trade that you wouldn't know and, and the lay person would not know unless they actually got to hear it from somebody who's uh, u utilizing those kind of skills. And so for me, it's a great place for me to be able to go down and go to class and sit in there with some of my fellow apprentices. Then we can all, you know, talk about our experiences in machining. And so you get a collective kind of uh, overall knowledge. I think the best way to inspire people is to show them that if they can see it, then they can be it. So somebody coming from a position like I did, uh, went through the struggles of life like I did, if I'm out here doing it, you you, you see it that someone else is being able to do this, that you, you should have that belief in yourself that I can do this too or I can even do better. And that's my goal is to make sure that I'm giving back and providing some kind of a, a open door to the people who are incarcerated that have a, a heart to for redemption and to you know turn their lives around and reclaim their reclaim their lives. By participating in um, a, a, a program like machining it, it definitely is one of those things that could lead to a reduction in recidivism in society. The people that are, are, are working in machining, they don't care about so much about what you did in your past. They want to know that you're going to be able to show up every day, that you're going to be able to do your job, that you have competency, um, that you're going to uh, acquire the skills that are necessary if you don't possess them. But you're going to have to be an open book and you're going to have to uh, be humble about it. And, and that's, a, a, you know, I think being incarcerated is a humbling enough experience that anyone that comes out and was given a chance 
to do something with their life and provide a better way is definitely gonna, you should take advantage of that.